Good morning! It's September 6th and this is your Daily Brief in Science. Here's everything you need to know. A recent study conducted by Professor Steve Cunningham at the University of Edinburgh has revealed promising insights into the effectiveness of saline nasal drops for treating colds in young children. The research involved 407 children under 6 years old and compared the use of saline drops to standard cold care methods. The findings indicated that children who received saline nasal drops experienced cold symptoms for an average of six days, which is two days shorter than the eight days reported by those receiving standard care. Furthermore, the study highlighted that the use of saline drops resulted in fewer medications needed by children during their illness, suggesting a potential reduction in reliance on other treatments. In terms of transmission rates, Households using saline drops reported that only 46% of family members caught a cold, compared to 61% in homes that did not use the drops. Parental feedback was overwhelmingly positive, with 82% indicating that the nasal drops helped their child recover faster, and 81% expressing a willingness to use them again in the future. However, some experts, including William Schaffner from Vanderbilt University, have raised skepticism about the effectiveness of saline drops in clearing viral infections. Schaffner has called for further studies to compare saline drops to plain water or lower concentration solutions to clarify whether the benefits stem from antiviral properties or merely symptom relief. Professor Cunningham hypothesizes that saline may enhance the body's production of hypochlorous acid, which could help combat the virus when administered early in the infection. The study suggests that saline nasal drops work by supplying extra chloride to nasal cells, thereby enhancing hypochlorous acid production and suppressing viral replication. Experts believe that this simple, low-cost intervention could significantly reduce the health and economic burden of colds globally, aiding parents in managing their children's illnesses more effectively. The research results were presented at the European Respiratory Society Congress in Vienna, Austria, emphasizing the potential global application of saline nasal drops. Although the specific 2.6% saltwater drops used in the study are not commercially available, Professor Cunningham's team plans to release instructions and a video for parents to replicate them at home. A recent study has uncovered that fetching, a behavior often associated with dogs, is also surprisingly common among cats. This research, published in the journal PLOS One, analyzed survey data from over 8,000 cat owners and nearly 74,000 dog owners collected between 2015 and 2023. The findings reveal that 40.9% of cats engage in fetching, with 58% of them carrying toys and 39% bringing toys to their owners for play. This marks a significant moment in understanding feline behavior, as it is the first study to estimate the prevalence of fetching in both cats and dogs, suggesting that cats may be more inclined to play fetch than previously believed. The study challenges the long-held notion that only dogs enjoy this activity, highlighting that many cats also partake in fetching games. Observations indicate that this behavior spans various cat breeds, with some cats developing a strong obsession for the game, often starting in their kittenhood. Particularly, Siamese, Burmese, Tonkinese, and Bengal cats were found to be more likely to engage in fetching behaviors. Interestingly, 78% of dog owners reported that their pets also participate in fetch, illustrating the popularity of this playful interaction among both species. Lead researcher Mikel Delgado points out that the differences in fetching behavior between cats and dogs may stem from their distinct domestication purposes. The study suggests that fetching mimics natural hunting behaviors and could enhance the bond between pets and their human companions. Delgado hopes these findings will reshape perceptions of cats as aloof animals, emphasizing their social interactions through play. The research underscores the need to reconsider assumptions about feline behavior and their capacity for social play, suggesting that, while fetching resembles hunting, it is more closely related to play than predation influenced by domestication. Researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital have made significant strides in understanding the mechanisms behind itching caused by allergens, such as mosquito bites. Their recent study reveals that GD3 immune cells in the skin produce a protein called IL-3 in response to these allergens, 
which in turn activates sensory neurons, leading to the sensation of itchiness. Experiments conducted on mice showed that removing either IL-3 or GD-3 cells resulted in resistance to allergen-induced itch, highlighting the critical role of IL-3 in both itch and immune responses. The study also sheds light on the IL-3 signaling pathway, which may help identify individuals at risk for allergies and guide the development of future treatments for allergic reactions. Notably, IL-3 prepares sensory nerves to respond to low levels of common protease allergens without directly causing itchiness. In contrast, individuals with no prior allergen exposure experience direct reactions to allergens, resulting in itching and an allergic response. While this research suggests a potential new pathway for addressing chronic itch disorders, further studies are required to determine its applicability to humans. Published in the journal Nature, these findings could pave the way for new treatments by targeting the identified pathway. The immune cells in mouse models closely resemble those in humans, indicating that the mechanisms discovered may also be relevant to human allergies. Led by Dr. Caroline Sokol from Harvard Medical School, the research emphasizes the importance of understanding the growing prevalence of allergies and the complexities of individual immune responses. However, it's worth noting that the authors have disclosed various financial interests related to pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Researchers in Canada have made a significant breakthrough in the analysis of evidence in sexual assault cases, addressing a critical issue that has long plagued the justice system. The new technique dramatically reduces the time required for DNA testing to just 45 minutes, a stark contrast to traditional methods that can take days or even weeks. This advancement employs a differential digestion method alongside digital microfluidics, streamlining the DNA separation process and cutting down the number of manual steps from 13 to just 5. Historically, forensic analysis has been a lengthy endeavor, often hampered by transportation delays and lab backlogs. This lengthy process has contributed to the hesitancy of victims to report assaults, as noted by lead researcher Mohammed El Sayed. By reducing these delays, this new method could encourage more victims to come forward, potentially leading to an increase in the number of cases pursued by authorities. The new technique is designed to work seamlessly with existing rapid DNA analysis technology, with hopes for future integration to enhance forensic efficiency even further. Researchers are also aiming to develop a device that could perform DNA analysis in just five minutes, which would vastly increase the number of samples processed simultaneously. While there are challenges ahead for commercial deployment, El Sayed expresses optimism about making this technology accessible. The implications of this advancement in forensic science are profound, promising faster and more efficient processing of sensitive evidence in sexual assault cases, with nearly half a million sexual assaults occurring in Canada annually and many going unreported, the potential impact of this technology is significant. Overall, this breakthrough could expedite the forensics pipeline, ultimately reducing the delays in processing DNA evidence. A groundbreaking study from the MRC University of Glasgow Centre for Virus Research and the University of Sydney is shedding light on the Flaviviridae family of viruses, which includes notable pathogens such as dengue, Zika, and hepatitis C. The research employs advanced machine learning techniques, integrating phylogenetics with artificial intelligence to predict protein structures and map glycoprotein structures across these viruses. Using AI technologies like AlphaFold and ESMFold, the team successfully classified viral entry proteins, a task that traditional methods struggled to accomplish. Glycoproteins play a critical role in virus entry and interactions with hosts. However, they remain poorly characterized across many Flaviviridae species, complicating vaccine development efforts. Currently, there is no vaccine for hepatitis C, which affects around 39,000 people in Scotland. The findings from this study could significantly advance the development of a vaccine, especially as the research reveals that hepatitis C employs a novel entry mechanism distinct from other viruses, warranting further investigation. Dr. Joe Grove expressed optimism that this new understanding of hepatitis C's entry mechanism will be instrumental in vaccine development. Additionally, the findings hold importance for pandemic preparedness and for understanding current viral threats, including MPOX, 
which the World Health Organization has classified as a public health emergency. The research team plans to expand their studies using AI technology to analyze thousands of viruses, thereby enhancing knowledge of both current and emerging viral diseases. This study represents one of the first systematic applications of protein structure prediction in virology, establishing a valuable resource for future investigations. The results have been published in the prestigious medical journal Nature, providing critical insights into viral evolution and mechanisms. This has been your daily brief in science. To read more about these stories, follow the links in the episode bio. You can also subscribe to these updates via email at www.brief.news. For more daily podcasts about the topics you love, visit brief.news forward slash podcasts. We'll be back Monday with everything you need to know.